What's up guys, this is the uh, Honest Outlaw here and today we're going to be doing a quick video on Smith & Wesson M&P modifications and accessories. So uh, basically we're going to talk about what you need to get once you buy your Smith & Wesson pistol, uh, some modifications you can do to the gun yourself, some aftermarket accessories that you can put on the gun. Uh, let's start in the uh, bottom here. Uh, let's go with my M&P 22. Uh, the first thing I would get for this is the same thing I would get for every gun. I would immediately get a quality holster. This one is from G-Code. As you can see there, it is a paddle holster. It is an outside the waistband. Uh, a lot of times I prefer paddle holsters, obviously. This is a contact here because it's easy to slip them on and off. And when I go out at side at night, I live on a ranch. If I go outside at night, I can throw it on really quick without having to take my belt off. That's pretty convenient for me. Uh, like I said, Comtac and G-Code, both those holsters are awesome. This holster also doubles as a competition holster. You can see the trigger guard, or you can see that the uh, front of the holster is cut out a little bit there for a faster draw. This is an awesome holster. It's 75 bucks, but it's an awesome holster. Uh, so the second thing I would get is extra magazines. Uh, as you can see here that I have plenty. Uh, bunch there, bunch more there. but. The main thing that you should get, or the, one of the main advantages of a semi-automatic pistol over a revolver is the ability to reload quickly. So why not take advantage of that ability? And uh, you're going to use up your mags. Mags uh, are not always permanent. Sometimes they break, sometimes you lose them, so make sure to get spares. As a general rule of thumb, I think people usually get four magazines per handgun. I usually get a little bit more than that, but that's a pretty good number. All right, so now if you get the 22 and you got your mags and you got your mag carriers, this one's from Blade Tech. Uh, this is an egg roll magazine pouch. This is probably one of my favorites. It's a uh, universal magazine pouch that you can use just about any magazine for except for 380. Once you got those, what do you do next? Well, the first thing I almost always add is grip tape because it is really cheap. This is skateboard tape. You can see there that I just cut myself. It looks like shit, but it works great and it's super cheap. This is the Talon Grips. Uh, they're a little more expensive. They work a little bit better and they look a little bit nicer. You can also go the route of grip stippling. Uh, this is an M&P Pro. It actually came like this. That's kind of neat. Uh, as I said in some other videos, I do prefer the grip tape because you can take it off. But uh, permanent's awesome too. Uh, if you got a version with a safety, uh, I guess this version used to have a safety and I just removed it. It's pretty easy to do. That's a pretty simple modification. You can see a lot of videos on YouTube where they do it and they take it a little more in depth than I think it needs to be. What I did was I just popped this pin out, shoved this thing up, and just pried it off. It was easy to do. I will probably be doing it on my M&P 22 as well. I might do a video about it if you guys are interested. The uh, biggest aftermarket accessory that I think I would add, uh, besides magazines and that, and grip tape, is going to be the trigger. Uh, the biggest complaint about the M&P pistols, uh, universally, is probably the trigger. This trigger here is still a stock trigger. This is the M&P Pro here. Uh, it's a little bit better than the traditional M&P. You can see there, it's got a pretty decent break, and it's got a pretty decent reset. Not as audible as the Glock. But uh, it's all right, considering all the hate that it gets. The uh, trigger that I would recommend getting, if you were going to get an aftermarket trigger, is I would recommend the Apex trigger. It's, uh, it's about as awesome as a polymer trigger can get, as far as my opinion goes. It's no 1911, but it's pretty close. As you can see there, it's got a flat face on it. I really like that. It gets rid of this uh, weird fulcrum thing that they have going on there. It adds the uh, traditional, like... Glock type uh, striker fired trigger safety, and it's a nice clean, it's a nice clean crisp break, and it's got a super short reset as well, which is also really nice. I can put that on the trigger gauge here really quick. You see that four point eight. You can see that four pounds, eight ounces. 
Do it one more time to make sure. Pretty consistent, four pounds, eight ounces. All right, so now we'll test that up against M&P Pro. Now, as I said, this trigger is a little bit better than the stock trigger you'll get on the traditional M&P 9, but it's a pretty good test, I assume. I can get it right on the trigger there. Now, as you can see, that's a little bit higher. Seven pounds, four ounces. Do it one more time just to make sure. Don't want to get any crazy comments about how I rigged it. Seven pounds, two ounces. So the Apex is significantly better in my opinion. Another uh, upgrade that I would seriously recommend would be uh, changing the sights. And uh, you can pick different sight options depending on what you're going to use your pistol for. Uh, this is primarily a, a competition pistol. I will be using this this summer. Obviously this looks a little brand new because it is. I haven't really done anything to it yet. I got it a couple weeks ago. But I do like the sights. I'll be keeping the sights, but I will be changing them out to a red fiber optic. I just prefer that. Green works well, but I prefer red. As you can see here, they have some Novak style sights. Uh, for competition use, I like those. I'm not one of those guys that needs to rack my slide off my belt every uh, every video so uh, that doesn't really bother me that much but if you like that kind of thing these Ameriglos have that and uh, like I said it's nice to have in a pinch uh, I do prefer uh, fixed steel tritium sights for uh, concealed carry and for home defense simply because even though the fiber optics can e be easily replaced they do break and I don't want it to break when I need it the most and I also like the idea of being able to see my sights at night and believe it or not, it's not usually for shooting, it's primarily for finding the gun at night. If you have a gun on your dresser drawer or something like that, it's hard to get to at night, but if you have those sights as a reference point, you can easily find it, grab it, and use it. Uh, on the M&P 22 here, I have the red fiber optic with the blacked out rear. This is my preferred sighting setup for everything besides home defense and concealed carry. There's a couple other options you can do that are really up to you. Uh, the magazine release, uh, I swapped this one out here. This is an L&M or something like that. It's not the Catalyst. I'll be getting the Catalyst here pretty soon. But do I prefer it? I don't know, actually. Uh, it's kind of sharp. It, not sharp in a way that it really bothers you. It's just, it feels a little uncomfortable. And I don't know, for me personally, if it adds that much benefit to actually having it there. I mean, I can obviously reach it with a one-hand grip, but I can reach this without changing my grip as well. So it doesn't really give me any advantages. If you had some smaller hands, maybe it would. I would have liked to have seen it if it would have somehow branched out a little bit over here, as opposed to just making it go straight up instead of angled off. But, you know, they do, they do what they can with what they have. Uh, another another thing you could add if you wanted to is a magwell. Uh, magwells can increase uh, reloading time and they also help you reference your grip a little bit better. If I had a, a, uh, if I had a uh, magwell on here my pinky would stick out a little bit and it would tighten my grip up to the front of the gun. Uh, big disadvantage to those is that they make the gun considerably more bulky depending on how big of one you get. And uh, like I said, for anything serious, you don't really need them because if you practice enough, you can reload just as well. If you uh, wanted to control the recoil a little bit more, you could go with a uh, M&P, the ported version. I have not tried that. It looks pretty cool because it has a stainless steel barrel. I like that look, but I did not go that route because if you want to use it for production division or IDPA or anything like that, you can't use a ported gun. Uh, some people say that if you shoot ported guns at night, it can give you night blindness. I don't know about that. Jerry Michelek had an awesome video about uh, magna porting, and uh, he said that it didn't bother him at all. I tend to take his advice since he's one of the best shooters in the world. Uh, you could add the uh, tungsten guide rod to the front there. Uh, for those of you who don't know what that is, the guide rod up front. Uh, I guess I can take this gun apart really quick. M&Ps aren't that hard to take apart. Uh, this is the guide rod here. Uh, this is made of stainless steel, I believe, on the M&Ps, on the Glocks, they're polymer. Uh, you can get a tungsten guide rod that weighs about twice as much, 
and it weighs down the front of your gun to uh, mitigate recoil. Now, I've had those in the past and I've heard that they work, but I've had two of them and I just, I just don't know if they work that well. And to be honest with you, the long slide version of this changes the balance enough already to where it kind of feels uh, front heavy. I don't know if I'd want to do that anymore. So uh, if you want to do that, that's up to you, but it will change the balance of your gun. Uh, one modification that I do a lot to almost every gun that uh, some people look down on or some people like is the uh, undercut trigger guard. Uh, you can send that to somebody to have them do it, but I prefer to do it myself because it's, it's pretty easy to do and it's pretty easy to mess up. Uh, if you want to take out the mag magazine release before you do it, that's really easy to do too. Uh, you can up look up YouTube videos on that. There is uh, all there is is a little bar in there, and you pry it out of the way, pull it up, push it out, push you know what I mean, push the new one back in. Uh, once you get that out, it's pretty easy to just grind this down, but don't just grind it flat. Make sure to round the edges a little bit and round the edges of the trigger guard a little bit because the higher you go up and the stronger you squeeze, the more your finger is not going to like you. So make sure that that's nice and rounded off and then go over it with some uh, finer grit sandpaper and probably make it look a little better than I did this one. I obviously don't care about looks as much as I care about functionality. But uh, that's something you can do to uh, get a little bit higher grip, get a little bit lower bore axis on the gun, be able to control the gun a little bit better for uh, no cost at all is a weapon light. Uh, if you guys are going to be using your uh, if you're going to if you guys are going to be using your gun for maybe not concealed carry for concealed carry you could use the Surefire XC1 for home defense uh, using a weapon light like this TLR3 for example all you really do is you spin this guy out like this and you fuck it all up and you uh, basically just tighten it down then at that point and you can tighten it down with a screwdriver or anything like that but as you can see it doesn't really add that much bulk to it and especially for a home defense weapon that's just going to be sitting on a uh, it's going to be sitting on a dresser or a table or something like that it is probably the best accessory you can have for a home defense pistol target identification is paramount uh, the majority of the times that I've ever had anything crazy happen at night it has not been a robber or a murderer or an ISIS member it's usually been a drunk friend or a dog or some dumb shit so make sure you identify your target and don't freak out and shoot something that you're gonna regret the rest of your life uh, number one I can't stress it enough please use a white light and the last accessory that I want to talk about really quick is ammo selection uh, if you want to look up a couple of good videos on pistol ammo selection, you can look up Billy Birdzell. He's got a great YouTube channel on it. But most people don't consider this. They want to buy a handgun, they want to put a light on it, and they want to just, you know, uh, they, and they think they're good to go. But the reality is, is that you have to choose the right ammo for home defense, for concealed carry, uh, for whatever you want, really. But this is Hornady Critical Defense. Uh, this works really, really well in a shorter concealed carry pistols. Uh, for larger frame pistols like this long slide or, or even an M&P, you could use critical duty that has a little bit better penetration. Uh, you could. There's all kinds of copper jacketed hollow point bullets out there that work really well. Uh, Barnes comes to mind. Uh, some other companies, uh, high, classic Hydroshocks work well, uh, but they all work better than your standard uh, FMJs. Uh, FMJs, I think if you actually look this up, they have a higher rate of lethality than hollow points, but that's because you have to shoot them 30 times and they end up bleeding out after they kill you. Uh, pistol confrontations in real life are not like what they are in the movies. You don't just shoot them and they just disappear. Uh, if you shot him 20 times with this, he may not even know he's been shot. He may just stand there, he may freak out, he may just run away. Uh, that's one thing you have to be aware of when you use a pistol for self-defense is that pistols generally don't kill people, rifles and shotguns do. So uh, be careful, make sure you use the correct ammo if you're going to select a pistol as your home defense gun or just your all-around defense truck gun, carry gun, whatever. But just be aware that it is not as effective as it is in the movies and certainly not as effective as rifles and shotguns are, but you can make it a little bit better with the right ammo choice. Thanks guys, this has been the uh, Honest Outlaw. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Uh, if you have any ideas for future videos, leave them below as well. Uh, please like and subscribe if you like the video. 
Uh, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.